Hey everybody, welcome to Concierge Confidential. I'm your host, Brian Ortega, and this week we are starting our planning for the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. So, um, really excited about the Super Bowl coming to Las Vegas. I think many Las Vegans are much more excited about the Super Bowl coming rather than uh, F1. Might depend who you ask, but I would say about 80% to maybe 90% of people are really, really excited for the Super Bowl because it's an event that's, you know, obviously it's very American. And it also is centralized in a part of the strip that doesn't have traffic on it. So, um, and essentially like how we have our football games every Sunday. And it's obviously supersized because it's going to have a bunch of different closures and such. But uh, it's it's really one week that I think everybody's very excited about. And it's one of those things that we've always wanted to have major sporting events in Las Vegas. And who would have ever thought that Las Vegas would become the sports mecca that it is. So uh, we're really, really excited for the event coming up. And I thought this would be a good time to get you start, you know, get you thinking about planning your trip here to Las Vegas. So we'll be diving into some room rates, d- diving into a couple different places you can watch the game, and some tips and tricks about how to watch the game for the least expensive amount as possible. So this is the Super Bowl episode here on Concierge Confidential. Okay, everybody, so welcome back. So we're going to be talking about the Super Bowl, obviously, coming to Las Vegas. Uh, we're obviously doing this a couple weeks before the actual big day or the big game, as it's known. Uh, so I'm going to use my parents as an example in a lot of these because they are actually traveling here to Las Vegas. They will be staying on the Strip at one of the properties, um, and they will be going to some of the events as well. When I say them, I mean I will be also be there going, going as well. So uh, anyways, so let's talk about the Super Bowl and how it works. So typically the Super Bowl, well, the Super Bowl itself is actually going to be February uh, Sunday, February 11th, uh, with the week of events essentially starting on uh, Monday though you know the week prior and then all the way up so this would start february 7th is when a lot of the festivities will start with their opening night which is going to be hosted at allegiant stadium which you can actually buy tickets for and be there for only 30 bucks so not too bad so um just know that that is different than the fan experience that they have going on throughout the week uh what is the fan experience you might be asking so the fan experience is actually going to be hosted in the mandalay bay event center so before we actually get into the particulars of about the uh, the fan experience, uh, it's important to note where a lot of these events will take place. Many of the events, sort of like the Super Bowl headquarters, uh, will be at Mandalay Bay. That's where they're going to have the media row, which is also known as rodeo, uh, rodeo, uh, uh, radio row, which is what it used to be known as. Um, just know for radio row, it is a credentialed event, meaning that even if you're just a part of the general public, you're not able to just walk through media row. You do have to have a credential for that day. Um, which if you're unfamiliar, Media Row is basically just a circus um, of a bunch of different media outlets, you know, radio stations, TV stations, uh, that kind of thing. And then they have a lot of, you know, former athletes, celebrities walking through to, you know, plug, you know, something that they're working on, you know, be a guest, get some exposure. Uh, That's essentially what Media Row is. It's sort of, you know, an organized circus, if you will. Uh, But anyways, that is going to be over at Mandalay Bay. So just know the Mandalay Bay area will be extremely busy for that entire week. So just know that that will probably be one of the more expensive places to stay just because it is, you know, right next to the stadium. So to give you kind of the geographic look of the entire place, uh, Allegiant Stadium is on the other side of the I-15 freeway, which overlooks the Las Vegas Strip. And the closest access point is Hacienda Bridge or the Hacienda Street, which actually crosses over from Las Vegas Boulevard to Allegiant Stadium. And the two hotels that are closest to that are Mandalay Bay and the Luxor Hotel. So just note, those would be the busy parts of town. If you are trying to get to Mandalay Bay and you are staying on other parts of the Strip and you want to walk there, um, one of the best ways to utilize this is actually getting down to like the Excalibur. Uh, and then once you get to Excalibur, they do have a free tram that will take you from Excalibur down to the Mandalay Bay. So that is a free tram that you can take on your way there. Obviously, you can Uber, Lyft, whatever you want uh, down that road. So let's start. So opening nights on Monday, 
essentially that's where you can you know see the stars whatever you want to do so um the next time uh, the next thing that's coming up is the super bowl fan experience which is actually just a interactive experience i've been to one of these when it was the all-star game in new york uh when i went to do do do, do where did i go i went to it for the all when they had the all-star game where you actually got to go in and like throw a baseball you know hit you know hit a pitch rub a foul ball do uh, color commentary for like an event going on. So that was for the All-Star game. But for the Super Bowl experience, they will have multiple venues where you're actually able to go in uh, and actually like, you know, precision passing. You can do the rushing yards. You can do a bunch of different stuff of that nature. You can take a picture with the Lombardi Trophy, the AFC and NFC trophies, uh, NFC trophy, excuse me. Uh, You can also see the Man of the Year uh, award so it's a couple different things mixed in for kids and adults to be able to walk through and see this event so important to note pricing for this is fifty dollars if you want to do it and this starts on wednesday for only 25 bucks um which again that's on wednesday and then starting on thursday is when it goes up to fifty dollars so i believe they're supposed to have uh like a locals access day from what i remember seeing on the uh, the Super Bowl committee actually did a uh, like a, sort of a, a briefing um, in front of the Clark County Commissioner's Office, and they were sort of explaining whatever what goes into this entire event. So um, that's supposed to be on Monday and Tuesday, but uh, on the weekend, typically Thursday, Friday, Saturday, those are the days that you can actually purchase tickets for. You do have to purchase for times, so it does have it by the hours. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, I don't even think it goes actually late as ten. I think it goes to like eight or nine. Uh, but uh, they have what's called the Super Bowl Extra Pass, which I don't believe is accessible anymore. Which was like another like thirty bucks, and you it was basically a fast pass line uh, that you can get to all of these different events. So just keep that in mind if you are going to be doing that. That is one thing that you can do while you're here if you're looking to sort of soak in all the experience while you're here in town. But again, starts at three o'clock, goes until ten. Uh, tw- it's fifty for adults, and again, any kids twelve or under is free. So again, this is going to be taking place at the Mandalay Bay Event Center, and I would say it's definitely worth your while doing it, especially if you're going to be coming for the Super Bowl. Um, I would say this is definitely an event um, you should probably do. So, kind of cool. Uh, I'm excited to do it. I'm going to be doing it with my parents on, I believe. I want to say Friday is what we're going to be doing it. So you kind of just have to know that's when the crowds are going to be there. A lot of people really start getting to the, you know, like people not that are not affiliated with the Super Bowl, so people not working it, but the people who are actually just here to actually watch the Super Bowl or be part of it typically get here on Friday or Saturday, and then they watch the game on Sunday, and they'll typically leave on Monday. That's typically how it works uh, when you're down there. So, again, um, so, yeah, so I'm actually going to run down the different events that they have. So they do have the uh, critical catch two-minute drill where you test your quarterback mastery by quickly passing the ball down the field. This seems kind of cool. They also have uh, – what else do we have? It's a training camp race. They have football scramble. They have FedEx air challenge, ground challenge. These are all actually just listed now, which they weren't before. 40-yard dash, which I will not be uh, participating in that. Uh, they have a combine wall, a bench press photo op. So um, looks like you're doing your bench press for the sh- tough guys out there. Uh, they have the vertical jump. And then they also have um, a different, uh, like, sort of activity. So they also have arts and crafts. They also have um, exhibits. For example, the Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award, uh, the chronology of pro football, which is essentially like a traveling hall of fame. And then they also have a couple different other things that you can uh, check out while you're there. So uh, quite interesting. I think it's going to be really fun to sort of do all of those experiences. And I think this is great for all ages, which is really the focus of that, which is really, really important. So now let's get down to what everybody really wants to know. What are the prices for the hotel rooms while you're here? So again, anything on the strip is going to be quite obscene. And then of course, Circo, which is on Fremont Street is also, you know, going to be pricier because of its, you know, not proximity to the Super Bowl, but um, it's known for its sports book and sports viewing options. So um, let's kind of just run through the list here. This is actually courtesy of Jeff Does Vegas, who has a great podcast that I highly recommend you listen to if you want to do, um, you know, sort of updates on how he comes to Vegas. So he actually is not a local. He has to visit from a different part of the country. And 
he is really cool to follow just because you can get it from a tourist's point of view uh, who knows the city quite well and has done things multiple times, which is very, very fun. So um, kind of just looking at his list, this is as of January 11th, uh, looks like Caesar's Palace is not available. Also, Caesar's Palace is also one of the marquee spots. They will be having the uh, Super Bowl breakfast will be over at Caesar's Palace, which my parents also might be going to, but I will not be participating in that. But um, let's sort of just highlight a couple different ones. So let's talk about the Aria. Aria, they're going for around $1,100 a night. Uh, we also have the Bellagio, which they're around $1,000. Um, it looks like the most affordable option is going to be in like the $250 to $300 range, which there's actually a couple of places that are around there. So um, kind of just looking at his list, he does have for $241 a night, he has Harrah's, which is a bit down the strip uh, makes sense in terms of that price point totally understand and then another one which is going to be around the same place is 273 dollars and that's going to be over at the link and then the horseshoe is actually has rooms for 229 dollars so that's really the lower spectrum is probably going to be around 250 bucks a night and then again on the weekends it's typically going to be a little bit more because the event is on the weekend. Um, one of the pricier places to stay, if you are looking at this wonderful, wonderful list. Um, let's look it down. Let's sort of just sort of peruse. So we don't have the win listed, which is interesting, but we do have the Cosmopolitan, which right now they're going for about $1,200 a night. I can corroborate this because my mom was trying to make reservations for someplace, and this is actually the price that she saw when she was trying to reserve for Cosmopolitan, where she will not be staying. So we will actually be staying over at New York, New York, uh, which is actually in a good location in proximity to a lot of the action. You're close enough to it where you can get there and far enough away that you can get away from a lot of the big, you know, crowds. So that's where they will be staying. But again, everything is ranging between, you know, 250 all the way up to $1,200 a night. I would sort of say a good sort of mid-tier place. Let's just say Planet Hollywood, for example. Planet Hollywood looks like it's going for about $500 a night. I would say that's sort of in the center of what the pricing is going to be. I think it's actually a pretty – it's still $500 a night. But I would say in terms of the strip during this event, it's actually doable in terms of location to other things that are in town. So uh, not terrible. Wouldn't say it's you know too bad. Um, also, just for fun, Circus Circus is $263, just in case, you know. You're in the market. But again, that is sort of the rundown. Uh, definitely go check out Jeff Does Vegas on Twitter. And he actually has this posted and pinned on his you know link. And then you can actually see sort of the price, uh, the rates that have moved. Um, the average rate essentially in town is about $657 is the average from top to bottom if you're going to be looking for you know your resort stays. So... Now, <clears throat> let's go into some of the pricing for a couple of the places to watch the game. So I kind of just sort of bopped around and looked at a couple different places. Every hotel is going to have a Super Bowl viewing party somewhere. Um, it's important to note when you do do these, you do them ahead of time. Now is the perfect time to do it. So we are releasing this on January 15th. So I would say this is the correct time to start reaching out to see how much stuff is going to be. If you get a, like if you wait one more week, essentially that gets you to the NFC and AFC championship games, which then at that point you're two weeks away from the Super Bowl, which then a lot of these things have been bought out, a lot of these things have been purchased. So it is very, very important to get this, you know, ahead of time. So um kind of looking at it, let's go with the one that is probably gonna be the most popular place to watch games. And yes, they do sell out, even though after I read you these prices, you might say, how is that possible? Uh, let's go over to Circa Sportsbook. So the Circa Sportsbook is probably one of the most well-renowned sportsbooks in the country. Uh, it has a huge LED screen, multiple places to watch the game, uh, which is really good if you have groups. I would definitely say groups is definitely a plus here. So let's just sort of get into it. So it's stadium style. 
and they have a couple different layers. So uh, let's just go with what the recliners will cost you. So when they talk about the recliners, the recliners are two rows right in front, right next to the tellers. So you are the closest to the actual screen. You will be looking up most of the time. It is, you know, your neck will hurt a little bit, uh, but those are for single seats. Obviously, if you are a couple, you can essentially ask for two seats and sit next to each other. But again, they could try to accommodate as much as they can, but it's something that you have to work out with them um, ahead of time. Um, and a lot of these pricings you can check out on Cir uh, Circa Sportsbook's website, uh, which does have the layout. It has it all the terms and conditions of uh, what we're going to read off next. So they have three different categories, the recliners, Circa Club, and Circa Sports Suite. So the recliners, those are currently going for $1,500 per chair, and that is a food and beverage minimum. So uh, what does that mean? Essentially, you will pay $1,500. This operates very similar to how nightclubs operate. You will pay $1,500. You receive the chair, and then you can get up to $1,500 in food and beverage credit. So as you're sitting there, you can order food, drinks from the barbecue place that actually is located right next to uh, right, actually located inside of Circa. They do deliver to the chair, obviously. Um, and essentially, you will get $1,500 worth of food and drink. Uh, just note that when you put these numbers together, $1,500 is the base. It does not include tax or gratuity, which will be added later. So just keep in mind, you will be spending more than $1,500. You will probably be spending closer to around $1,700 to $1,800 because you have to add the tax and gratuity on top of that. So just keep that in mind when you are actually you know, uh, looking into this. So um, I'm actually kind of just surfing through just to make sure I get all of these things um, correct. But again, that is going to be for for like single groups, um, um, when I say single groups, you know, somebody who's by themselves or like, a, you know, one or two people, uh, that is kind of what we're talking about. So is it worth it is always the question. And I have to say, it depends, but we'll actually answer that question later because I don't want to get into that right now. I want to kind of just sort of peruse through. So um, I'm actually on to the recliners site. And at some point, we're going to click it, and it's going to do something. So uh, so I'm reading this directly off of Circa's website. All-inclusive food and beverage package with premium open bar and stadium-style food offerings from Project Barbecue and Victory Burger, which is great. So what does this include? It includes everything that I said, um, and you do have to be there at 2 o'clock. So you have to arrive by 2 o'clock, or they will sell that seat again, and you do not get a refund. Not at all. And you will get the seat between 2 and 8 o'clock, which essentially is the entire Super Bowl. So just keep that in mind for the recliners. They're not bad. If you've ever been to Circa uh, or the Circa Sportsbook, they do have seats on the edges. I didn't see those available to purchase now. It could be because they're all sold out or it could be because they haven't released those prices yet. Uh, but again, those typically are lower in price in terms of the, to the recliners because the recliners are essentially like leather seats. The stadium style seats are going to be stadium style seats that you would get at like a really nice, you know, sporting event. So let's move up to the next tier. So we got a lot to go through here. So up to the next tier, you are looking at the booths. This is the, the sort of the premium seats. They have booths. They have sort of these, not banquettes, but they're essentially booth banquette sort of style. Uh, they're all booths essentially. So these booths accommodate up to six people. Six people is the max. You can have less than that. That's not a problem. Um, they typically do not put you with other people you don't like, you don't know, uh, unless you know there's only two of you. But essentially, these are for groups of you know between four and six, and then the pricing for that would be seventy five hundred dollars for the entire package. So again, it's seventy five hundred dollars, six people max. That is for the booth. It's seventy five hundred per booth, not per person. So these, you can actually go online and reserve them. Um, a lot of times, they don't let you choose the exact location. It's just the type that you're going to get, uh, which essentially doesn't matter. They're all kind of the, you know, the same viewing option. Uh, just one's going to be on the left, one's going to be on the right, one's going to be in the center, so on and so forth. But these are probably the premium views that you will get. And you get to sit in a booth, and then you also get the same offerings that you get for Victory Burger, and Project Barbecue. And again, this includes food and drink as well. And of course, just always tack on, you know, 20% for gratuity and of course, sales tax on top of that. 
Uh, and again, these you do have to arrive by certain times to get that choice. Last but not least, this is the creme de la creme. This is the Circa Sports Suite, which to be 100% honest with you guys, um, the Circa Sports Suite, I believe, is something that was added um, after they've built, you know, Circa, and they figured out, okay, how do we monetize this as well? So this is the very back portion of the sports book, um, which actually sits up. It has places to sit that look out to the TV screens, and they also have your own little private space where you, they have sort of like cocktail tables in the back so you can actually fit the most people. This accommodates up to 12 people. 12 people is how much it can accommodate. So what does that package come out to? That package comes out to, hold on to your ears, $10,000 per package so um they have a couple different of the a couple a couple of these available if you wanted to you know go and you know splurge uh so ten thousand dollars is going to cover all the food and beverage and drinks um i'll just sort of go ahead and pull this up as well so it in it's all inclusive food and beverage package with premium open bar and stadium style food offerings from project barbecue and victory burger and uh, let's see prepaid amount will be tendered towards your final check so they tend to like for you to do a deposit, unless you want to pay in full, of course. Uh, but again, same deal as the other places. This is not a bad option just because you are getting the food and beverage included. So make sure when you are booking these things that you are looking and seeing that it says food and beverage included or food and beverage minimum. And it's, you know, 1500 10000 whatever. Um, you want to include food and beverage. It's very, very important. You don't want to purchase the rental fee and then food and beverage on top of it, which I was told and, you know, kind of looking at it, uh, places like Fountain Blue, their sports book is requiring, like, for example, I didn't even look for the Super Bowl, but uh, probably going to be offering somewhere close to this between six and 7,000 and then uh, a food and beverage on top of that, which would be very, very interesting. So um, just, you know, do a little bit more research into that. Um, I've been kind of like looking through a couple different ones, so I didn't have time to go through that one in detail. Uh, but you can always check that out, of course, uh, through their website. Uh, but again, this is what Circa is offering, and it's not the only option that they have, uh, which honestly, if you are a single person and you're not going to be drinking or eating that much food, I do not recommend getting the recliner at $1,500. That may not be what you want, unless you're going to be drinking and stuff. But again, it's um, it's a tougher sports book to maneuver in terms of if you are a single person who just wants to stand around because it is not made for that. It is made to sit down and sort of look out. So again, that is for the sports book inside. Now, they actually do have a different option where you can do your own watch zones or watch parties in certain spaces of Circa, which typically takes place in the very large convention center, um, which will be, you know, in, in pieces. Uh, their watch zone at Circa is $350 per person, six person minimum to book. So this also includes food and beverage, you know, uh, food and drink, of course. Uh, and this, the only thing is, is this is not in the sports book. So you do have your own viewing space. It's $350 a person. And again, this is in a separate part of the hotel. So just be, you know, clear about what you are purchasing when you are doing this. So again, it's always just double check, double check, double check. So as I'm kind of looking at the viewing for Stadium Swim. Stadium Swim is the other huge option that they have over at Circa where you're able to go and watch the games. This is going to be taking place in their world-renowned stadium-style pool, which does have a huge TV screen. They have multiple options for that as well. So uh, currently, you can get field access standing room for $125. It does include two drinks or two drink tickets, if you will. Uh, and you basically are standing or you can walk into the water, which is heated, which they love to tell you that it is heated. Um, they also have uh, club level standing, which is a little bit higher, and that's going to be $175. So it just gives you optimal viewing uh, at those prices. And those are walk-in prices, and those are per person. And again, those are essentially tickets that you can also get two drinks with it. Um, they do have a couple cabanas, day beds, executive booths available. So if we're looking at the most affordable option in that case, their day beds, which typically accommodate up to four people, is typically the max. You are looking at a $3,500 uh, minimum spend 
So that's for the entire length that you are there. So again, 3,500 minimum spend for a day bed. Then you're going to be looking at an executive booth, which is sort of like, you know, a little bit more booth style. Um, sometimes your feet are in the water for that one. Just have to depend on where you get that, you know, actual location. That is $4,000. Their VIP on-field booth is 4,500. They also have their outer cabanas and their inner upper cabanas still available. And those are $12,000 a pop. So again, operates similar to sort of like a day club vibe. So just note that you don't want to be getting bottles of champagne if you're trying to be on a budget. Champagne is the biggest waste of money that you can get in a nightclub or day club atmosphere. Do not do it because you are going to get two drinks out of it thanks to all the beautiful bubbles that comes with it. You get less drink than you really want. Um, a really good way to attack this is always doing um, like beer buckets. It's always a really great choice just because – one, you have these readily readily available. It gets you to your food and beverage spend, and you can spend more money on food and whatever else that you want. If you want a cocktail, go order a cocktail. It's totally fine. But usually buckets of beer is really the safest way to get to your minimum spend and also be you know frugal at the same time because i had i i actually did a bachelor party one time for the super bowl at top golf where they just ordered all this stuff at the beginning and it's like okay what do we do now because now we're close to the minimum and we don't want to get too far over because then we're going to spend you know more money out of pocket so again so all I'm saying is sort of just go in this strategic when you're doing one of these minimum spends, which is, you know, you know, important to note if you're going to be doing this. So um, another place that I actually have not experienced yet, but I really, really look forward to doing it sometime soon. And hopefully I'll maybe like do a video on it and maybe mash them all together for like the Super Bowl um, is uh, Whiskey Stadium, which I didn't know this was being built for the longest time. And then it was I was just driving by the freeway and you just see Whiskey Stadium uh, or the big house or Whiskey Stadium, uh, which which is a bar, which is actually located outside of Allegiant Stadium, very, very, very close, um, which is really cool. It looks really, really awesome. But it's a huge space that you're able to go and, you know, I, I've been told $25 to actually park there, which honestly I'm not terribly, like, worried about because, you know, it's right by Allegiant Stadium. But what they have going on for the Super Bowl is actually not too, too bad. Um, you can do an all-you-can-eat package for $175, and then they also have a $25 extra, so an add-on, for a premium drink package, which, you know, will have, you know, certain stipulations, of course, as well. Um, but I think that's not bad. I think, you know, let's just, you know, double check here. We'll read through the flyer. So $175, this is not inclusive of tax and gratuity, so obviously tax would be a, uh, a, uh, added. Um, they do have all you can eat. And just sort of going through here. I do think it is very important to note it doesn't say if you get a seat. It doesn't say if you get a bar seat. So if you do book this, because you do have to book it and they have an inquiry form, um, make sure you ask if that includes a chair, a, a bar top, whatever, uh, because sometimes it'll be like standing room, even though it's only $175. So just double check. It's really important to just ask. Uh, but again, I think that's just something that you should, you know, go in wondering. But it looks good. They have a very nice large menu. It's right, you know, really close proximity to Allegiant Stadium, which is sort of you just want the vibes, um, which I think is going to be great. I think it's going to be packed. Um, essentially, you're probably going to be able to walk over there, maybe take an Uber sort of the long way around. I would not drive your car there during the Super Bowl. Absolutely not. No way. But I think this might be a really fun option um, if you want to get by the stadium and have a really, really good time. So a couple other places that I know off the top of my head will probably having something. They will have uh, over at the Paris Hotel. They have the Beer Park, which has so many TVs, overlooks the Bellagio Fountains, which in fact, uh, the Bellagio Fountains will have the CBS Game Day. Uh, crew or the CBS pregame show, which is going to be, and they also, I believe, have ESPN being set up over there as well, um, similar to what they did for F1. But again, I don't think it's you know as bad. I get really irritated by people like Vital Vegas. Yes, I call them out, Vital Vegas, uh, and other people who get uh, chocolate. What's her name? Her name is um, um, uh, Starfish, uh, Vegas Starfish. Uh, you're, you're making these an issue that you don't need to. The good thing about having these things put in front of the Bellagio, in front of the Bellagio fountains, this is good for the Bellagio. This is good for the city just because the reason we built these things 
is for people to see them. So I really, really am excited to see all the beautiful things that Vegas has to offer, and including the Bellagio Fountains. One of my favorite things about the city is the Bellagio Fountains, and I think we really need to utilize them more, and I think this is a great way of doing it. How do you ensure that these things stay you know, alive and stay with us? You put it out in the world to see, to say, hey, you want to come see these you know, world-famous fountains here in Las Vegas. So I'm all for it. I'm totally cool with it. As we kind of get back to where to go, so Park MGM has Beer Park, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, I think, uh, again, just double check for pricing. It's going to range, you know, between, you know, tabletops, all you can eat, all that good stuff. Um, most places are going to be between the 150 to 250 range, depending on location, depending on seating, depending on party size. Uh, it will be a lot of these things. So, again, just do it ahead of time before they get sold out because these places do get sold out for the Super Bowl. Definitely one of those things. And if you are somebody who really needs to sit down for one of these events, um, you want to get these early and you want to pay, you're, you're going to pay these prices. That's essentially what it is. Um, or you can do what I recommend doing and do one of my tips or tricks, which is don't pay for any of this stuff. So um, I'm really excited to sort of explain this because. For the longest time, I used to have to sell these things, and it's just funny because being somebody who, you know, watches a lot of football, and I've been watching football with my dad for forever, and uh, we've never been the type of people to purchase seats because my dad's somebody who doesn't like to sit down, so we're actually like big into like roaming around or finding a spot, and we'll stand there for hours. Um, although my dad's getting a little bit older, so he does need a chair to find you know a place to sit at the bar. Uh, which is important. So tips and tricks. You do not have to reserve a space to watch the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. They will have the Super Bowl on every single TV in the entire city. If it's a public space, the Super Bowl will be on. So usually you can just sort of walk around. You will typically find a spot. Sometimes you'll find the chair, and then you sit down. So a lot of this does require you to be in that spot pretty early in the day. So the Super Bowl is supposed to be at, let's just say, 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Typically it's around 4, um, especially if it's on the West Coast. Uh, you probably have to be around the spot that you want to be at, usually around noon, sometimes earlier, like 11. Um, you have to get around your spot, get to your seat, and just stay there. You can swap it out with the person that you came to Vegas with. Totally fine. Uh, but you do have to get to that spot early. But again, just walk around. All of the bars will have them, like Cosmopolitan. You know, They used to have a bar you can just walk up to. Again, these places have gotten a little bit sharper about it, but there's some places that just, you know, lend themselves to be, um, you know, walk-up spaces. Uh, public bars are really great. Typically bars that are like casino bars or, you know, sort of uh, just areas that are off the beaten path where they don't have enough revenue. Not revenue, but they don't have enough, I would say, uh, they don't really put themselves out as a place to watch the Super Bowl, but they have the Super Bowl on. Like high limit bars are great. The high limit bars are fantastic because one, nobody wants to go sit at the high limit bars. And then two, um, people are afraid to sit at high limit bars. And three, typically you can find a space. So I would say places like the high limit bar at Resorts World is great. The high limit bar uh, at, oh my goodness. It's, I'm blanking on it now. Oh, at Park MGM was great as well because they had TVs and were able to sort of just sit down. That was cool. Uh, but yeah, just look for like the high limit bars. So this is usually in the high limit part of the casino uh, that are you know special. They usually have a bar. You can just walk up there. They typically don't have spending minimums. The prices for a beer is you know going to be still twelve dollars. But again, it's a way to get around having to purchase, you know, a thousand dollar seat and you end up spending, you know, let's just say 150, 200 bucks, um, in one seating for an afternoon. And again, if you're playing a little bit, maybe the bartender hooks you up, which is quite nice. Um, but again, I mean, fountain blue also has a very nice bar that I discovered the other day. Uh, they have a couple of them that actually have the TVs might be a good place to watch the Super Bowl. Yeah. You never know. Uh, but again, just Keep an eye out. You kind of have to be on the search for it. But 
essentially every place that you're going to be visiting will have the Super Bowl on. They'll have Super Bowl parties. Typically, those are for restaurants like Tao, Lavo, places that are, you know, enclosed. They will typically pull in TVs and they will have their own events. Same thing with the nightclubs. You'll be looking at these spending minimums, which are pretty normal. So um, what time are we at, guys? Let's see here. Oh, my goodness. We've been talking for quite a long time. So let's see. I'm going to actually do what my parents are going to do uh, on the next episode. So on the next episode, we'll actually go into what I'm planning for my parents while they come because I think we have a pretty good plan. Also, the cool thing about the Super Bowl is that we have cool artists that tend to visit Las Vegas. So I'll be doing that on the next uh, on the next one around. So um might have a bonus episode, might not. We'll see. I just don't know. There's so many things going on in town. I'm so excited. So anyways, this was your sort of pre-planning of the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions about this, you can always message me on Instagram, Concerts Confidential underscore LV, or, or my personal Instagram, which is Brian underscore Ortega 26. Um, and I'll try to answer your questions as good as I can. And again, if you have any questions, reach out to me. You can also follow all of our videos on TikTok, which is at Keys to Vegas, where you can actually check out our latest videos. The latest one that had just released is going to be uh, Lucini, which is over at the MGM Grand. And hopefully you go check that out on our Instagram and TikTok pages. Give it a view. Give it a like. Give it a comment. Whatever. Um, if you thought it was too expensive, I get that a lot. Um I don't think it was, but you know, it is, it is what it is, but hopefully you guys enjoy the episode. Really appreciate you guys. Hopefully I'll see you if you're here in Las Vegas for the Super Bowl. If you do catch me out there, come say hello, but remember if you do keep it confidential. <laughs> <laughs>